This is the second part of a two-part session with Converse Sales, our treasurer in South Carolina. Uh, we want to talk a little bit of today about the budget crisis that we have in the state and some of the options that Converse has provided along with the leadership of the House and the Senate to address some of the budget issues that we have in the state of South Carolina. So, Converse, let's talk a little bit yeah. about the... Uh, Appreciate uh, you having us, Otis. Well, glad to be here. T uh, talk a little bit about the proposal that you, Glenn McConnell, Hugh Leatherman, Dan Cooper, and Bobby Harrell put together to try to stabilize the budget process and the appropriations process we have in South Carolina? Great question because we, um, we found out that we, we needed to have uh, better reserves than we have in the, in the past. We've, we have a 3% general reserve. We needed to move that up. Uh, I'd like to have seen it, see it even higher than what we've got, but we were able to work out something where we get it up to 5%, which, right. is, which is good. And, and then I, uh, another part of it was the capital reserve. And the capital reserve was kind of used as to, uh, not really a reserve account. It was, you know, we, uh, a lot of times it was a, uh, special projects were put in there. And if it wasn't used, they would use it for the special projects. Well, what I, uh, when, I, when I found out that they were using it at the very beginning of the year of any shortfalls immediately, it was being used up and we didn't have anything at the end of the year. So I asked them, I said, we really need to move that to the end of the year after the comptroller closes the books and we do all the closings to find out if we have any shortfalls at that point because there's no room at the end if you've got a shortfall right. coming. If you've already used that first line of defense, it's, it's not there. So I encourage them to move that to the end of the year and to that end of the process. So technically now we've gone from a 3% reserve to a 7% reserve, okay. reserve, which is, I think is the right way to go to kind of stabilize what you said earlier. Well, I tell you, it's, it's been kind of tough with the recession and all, and, and uh, you know, what even makes it a, a tougher is once the observe, uh, reserves have been used up, which we've used our reserves up, the General Assembly has got to replenish that, and that takes more dollars out of the general fund to, to replenish those dollars. So it really kind of catches you both ways, uh, coming and going, if you use all your reserves up or if you don't have enough reserves to, to, to do what you do to meet the debt uh, or the shortfalls that you right. have. And, and part, of that, part of that process, we also, re, uh, re, if we have a shortfall coming up when the mm -hmm. budget, uh, when the Board of Economic Advisors says we're not going to have the revenues like we've been right. going this last two years, Instead of waiting to yeah. cut any cuts to the to the to the agencies, it immediately goes in. Or the cut goes in immediately right. unless there's a. This is the new law that's going right. in. Unless we have a five zero vote, five to zero vote on the budget control board right. it takes five votes to undo that, and we've moved it from a four percent threshold down to a two percent. Right. That's going to be a major effort now because it'll happen immediately, and we won't have to wait around and, and may or may not do something. So. Well, to, to drop it down, I know that uh, that, that allows across-the-board cuts to all agencies, I'm assuming, where if it, it was a 4% threshold or, or greater, uh, it, the General Assembly would have to come back and address that, right? Right. So it, that kind of relieves the General Assembly of having to come back and do it. The Budget Control Board just automatically handles it, any shortfall. Well, right actually, now. it's automatic. Right. It, uh, it doesn't even cut. The Budget Control Board wouldn't, they would have to undo it, not okay. not, not actually vote to do it. I got you. So I that's what the, that's what the, uh, which is a pretty good deal. I mean, that now it, ha it we get it done and we don't have to sit around and wait yes. for it. Well, I know one of the concerns of the business community is uh, spending limits. Sure. And uh, what we saw two or three years ago, you know, the General Assembly appropriated $1.7 billion more than what they did the previous years. Of course, the last two years, uh, the economy has just fallen out of the, uh, you know, fallen off the table. And we've taken a $1.3 billion cut last year, and now we're into probably a 6 or 7% cut this year again. Um, how, how do we get legislation passed, or how do, how do we get the leadership in the House and the Senate to understand that we've got to have some type of uh, stable process for appropriations. Right. Well, I, I think they all understand that they need to move towards that uh, smoothing, like a five or ten year smoothing period in mm -hmm. there. Uh, spending limits is one of my objects, uh, objects that we're trying to, um, uh, to to move towards with right. them, and I've been talking to them about it. But you, as you know, there's 170 members over right. there, and of that, you know, uh, 46 senators and 124 uh, House members. And you have to get them all together to move, and that's going to be a tough, a right. tough nut to, cru uh, to crack. But we're working on that with them to see if we can help m move that along, because there's some yeah. good bills over there in regards to that. Well, I, I reckon we just talk about spending limits a little bit. We almost got to talk about how they forecast revenues a little bit. And I know that uh, Senator McConnell has got a bill that's 
that's being reviewed right now that kind of looks like looks at a 10-year rolling average to try to decide what the base for appropriation is. Do you think that's a, a good solution for the process? Along with that, with a spending cap with it, I think it would work real well. What? Because what? Because what, what happens? Let's look at. Um, if you look, if you go back over the last 12, 15 years, our our growth rate has been very small. Right. But it's what you just said. Uh, we we had a, a drop in the recession back in the early 2000s, right. and then we had a spike, and then that spike kind of over uh, overreacts you to a right. maybe a a, a, a a budget situation that puts you up a little bit higher than you should be. But it, but if we'd had a 10-year smoothing, we probably would have been fine in there because we right. we we only going up about two percent a year during that same period of time. Well, I know that uh, the chamber and and its uh, board and its members have uh, supported a, a spending limit of CPI plus population mm -hmm. growth. Do you think that's a viable option, or is, is, is there something else out there that we I, well, need to look I, at? Well, you know, any any uh, any one that you pick probably would be viable, and that would be just as good as any. I'd I'd love to see that happen if they could do that. Well, you know, our guys and, and ladies at the chamber, it's just they just hate to see government grow more than the revenues are growing, or what, or how our economy is growing. And I think that's what's really kind of got us into fix the last four or five years where we are, and you know, the service delivery that agency provide to our businesses as well as our individuals are suffering uh, pretty dramatically and, and more so than that the pressures that are being put on the public education system and with Act 388 oh. sitting right there we're the only people left standing to pay for additional um, uh, rev le local revenues to run the schools and all so pretty important for us to figure out a solution at the state and, level to and, stabilize and, it. and 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 part of it we have to make sure that we don't hurt ourselves with, this, right. with the caps at the same time. I mean, Col for Colorado, for example, I think oh, several yeah. years ago, had, they had a spend, but they didn't have it planned out properly. Right. We just need to plan it properly. Well, and I know another one of the points in the program is zero-based budgeting and Absolutely. making the agencies uh, go back and review each program and see whether those programs are effective or not. Uh, how do you conceptualize that that part of the of, of I, process work? I really see that a very important process because you go back and you look at zero to start with, and you say, okay, do we need X and A, one, two, three, and you work through each one of them, and what are they doing, and why are they doing it, and we are is that successful program for that now? Is it really right. pr what government needs? And if it doesn't need it, you take it off the you know you take it off the books. And hopefully that re the idea there is that you are cutting, uh, you're, you're cutting uh, cost and yeah. you're reducing government. Uh, this would probably be a tough question, so I don't know if we've kind of thought through this whole process. But it, are, are we going to leave the legislative staff to look and make those recommendations when agencies come back and go through a zero-based process, or are we going to allow legislators to do it? Because you know it's so involved to go back and look at each programmatic area within an agency to decide whether it's effective or not and get some type of consensus around that in the legislative process. How do you see that working, the, the, the trade-offs and things like well, that? Well, I, 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 I've been a big uh, proponent of, of uh, empowering people to do what's right and get them to do the work. So right. you'd start with the agency itself to empower them with the process that this is what you have to do come back and be able to justify from the ground up those right. those expenses and and um, to, to the General Assembly's credit if you've gone through one of their uh, budget uh, and, um, reviews right. they kind of do that now right. but it's not done correctly they need to just add a couple more steps to it and and go get back to the real zero based budgeting well I think that's what we would like to see uh, before we close that uh, agencies have to justify their existence and justify how successful a program is and that they use the information that we got for additional appropriations and what the cost-benefit analysis is to the state from that program and then go back and review it every th five years, no more than every five years to see if what the agency said they're actually doing right. and what the benefits were. Part so. of our plan has also got a streamlined commission in it to right. do exactly what you're talking about is to look at all the agencies at once you get some of this data in and are they really what we need to be doing for government. So yeah. these are all the processes of trying to get our government under control. Well,